So the Warlock Stag Helm is an odd exotic that many people overlook for its simplicity and usage in game. It rewards players with Rift Energy upon being critically hit, and will also allow you to drop a healing rift upon death. Now, for both PvE and PvP, this should sound pretty great and handy to use in team play, from 6 man groups to 3 man groups. But that's not the case from what I can tell. The exotic, although interesting in practice, is sorely not that required when you have a high recovery stat covering this aspect. And the idea of dropping a healing rift upon death is handy but limited in its use. Sounds terrible, right? Well, that's what I thought until today. Hello everyone, 3D Hero here, and welcome back to today's build session for Destiny 2. I hope you're all keeping safe out there, no matter where you are in the world. In today's video, we're going to be building around the Stag Exotic Helm for PvP, and make use of its critical health bonus for a boost in Rift Energy, and then combine this with our Healing Rift, our two perks of choice, Pulse Monitor and Eye of the Storm, and make use of the Charge with Light mods, to create a very interesting build to where we get better the lower our health is. This is something that I couldn't do before because of the strictness of the perks required, but thanks to the cold denial roll I managed to get, this has actually come out pretty damn well to use. I would say if you are a PvP player, both new or old, and you're looking for a build to try out that has a nice twist with it, then stick around and I'll show you everything about the build will accomplish for you. So the subclass we will be using is the Tunnel of Elements, and this is to make use of the Arc Soul perks and Electrostatic Surge perk when we get the chance to do so. As the build will lean heavily in the use of Rifts via normal means and the Stag Exotic perks, I thought this would be the best subclass to pick to accommodate this fully compared to all the other subclasses we can choose. The idea here would be to have an average level of recovery available, and then make use of the Electrostatic Surge perk while near my allies to boost his recovery rate further, so I can then use my Healing Rift to keep me afloat and make use of all my perks provided. Like I mentioned earlier, once I hit critical health, I'll get a boost of recovery energy back, and will be able to quickly get my Rift back and up and running within mere seconds. At the same time, this will also allow me to spam my Arc Souls for me and everyone else, so I can then play a bit more aggressive and use my range to my advantage to net multiple kills at once. This is how the build will play out for you, and the good thing about this is that you don't need to have a lot of recovery to pull this off, so you're going to be getting a lot on the get go. Plus, at the rate of how much Rift Energy you get upon reaching critical health, means that even if you lose the engagement, when you come back you're practically near or fully recovered to use it again, so win or lose, everything will play within your reach. For the grenade, the Pulse Grenade is highly recommended as it's truly the best grenade to use for duration and damage in game, but for PvP's other things, it's also tied in well when using the Arc Ball Grenades for catching a weak player out, and also being very accurate in doing so. For weapons, it's recommended to have at least one or two weapons with the Pulse Monitor or Eye of the Storm perk, to make full use of the synergy within the build. Now which weapon is best for that is down to you to play around with, but for simplicity, the currently new season pulse rifle that we currently have is a great place to start with. Within the primary slot I've gone with the Cold Denier pulse rifle with Eye of the Storm, Pulse Monitor, Light Mag and Hammer Forge Rifling. Now this role I have going is the reason behind how the build came to life, as it is a very unique role to see and the two perks within the weapon work really well when they're not really damage based. Now, we see a lot of common perk combination that everyone goes for, such as Outlaw and Kill Clip, or Firmly Planted and Rangefinder, etc. But when it comes down to not so common perk talent, such as Eye of the Storm and Pulse Monitor, hand in hand, we get a unique twist that can benefit us in many ways. These two perks both work when you lose health or reach critical health. And when you combine them with the Stag Helm, which also provides Rift Energy once you hit critical health, you create a wonderful combo that will push you to win more one-on-one -on -one fights as you get the benefits the more you are critically wounded. It sounds completely risky, I know, but this is kind of how I like to play when I'm doing different types of builds, to experiment and see exactly what I can create that will not only be beneficial, but could also bring something new to the table. For something different, this build perfects what we are doing very well, as PvP you're always going to be in a life or death situation. So in our case here, this setup will work wonders every or generally all the time you play with it. Also, considering the pulse is a 2 burst and is very accurate when crouching or standing still, 
means engagement through your end will always end up being a 50-50, which is what we want so we can prop the perk and still win most of our fights. For a secondary, I'm using the Last Hope sidearm with Rampage, Firmly Planted, and Appended Mag. A very great backup weapon to use when in close quarters, sidearms in general offer a wide versatility in whatever PvP setup you have in mind, and are great for countering shotgun or sniper users when my primary is very limited. As my pulse is designed for mid to long ranges, I thought pairing it up with a secondary that suits slightly faster and has decent magazine size would complement the build all round and will provide some extra support in the meantime. Alternatively, the Last Dance, Anonymous Autumn and 7th Seraph SI2 sidearm are also great alternative choices to go with, as that can also roll with full auto, which is a must have if you have the time to farm for one, or even warp a weapon that can only roll on the 7th Seraph sidearm and is genuinely handy for shutting down super users. For Heavy, we've got the Interference Grenade Launcher with 4 Quart and Auto Load and Holster. One off from being a god roll, if I was lucky to get a spike grenade roll, the roll I have now is still good for PvE focused content, specifically against bosses or ultras alike. For PvP, there's not much of an ideal roll to look for as you just need to make sure your blast radius and velocity is at a moderate high level. Also, I don't plan to use my heavy in most matches, so the choices of picking what heavy you like to go with in PvP is freely available for you, if you plan to make use of it more than I do. For the stats, we have a nice leveled out feel for PvP, which is ideal compared to what we are going for instead of PvE instead. The three main stats to focus on for PvP are resilience, recovery and mobility. These three stats will provide the means for surviving many of your counters, and will have a large effect depending on what class you pick. In our case here, we have managed to get the three stats in the perfect ranges with mobility at 50, resilience at 58, and recovery at 61. With recovery at 61, I will get a 1 minute 3 second cooldown, which will benefit us widely when combined with our exotic, our subclass perk, and also getting kills like normal. For what's left over, I have decided to focus on improving my intelligence stats as a change of pace within the build. At 78, I will get a 4 minute 7 second cooldown, which depending on how you play will mean I will be able to get my super up to about 3 times within the match, but that's a big if depending on who I'm up against. For this area, I will leave you the choice to decide on which area is best to focus on, since our stats may be similar, but will be completely different in the end. Also, you may want to focus in discipline rather than intelligence for once, which for PvP you will probably get a lot more action out of it. Now, this all depends on what exactly you consider is a must have for a stat choice in PvP. For armor, the stack helm with Arc Affinity will be the perfect pairing for the pulse I'm going with, so I can get a pulse strike or targeting mod, but decided against it since my accuracy will be buffed when my health gets lowered, and extra aim assist isn't always that great for most weapons. In this case here, we're going to be using a sidearm targeting mod instead. The rest of the armor will require you to have this season or next season mod slots for your chargeable light mods, but except from that, nothing specific is required this time round, so you should be able to get the following stuff easily. Now here are the mods we are currently using, which I will go in a bit more depth afterwards. Head, Intelligence and Sidearm Targeting mod, Arm, Resilience, Enhanced Pulse Rifle Loader, Unstoppable Pulse Rifle, and Taken Charge mod, Chest, Resilience, Enhanced Unflinching Rifle Aim, and High Energy Fire mod, Leg, Recovery, and Enhanced Pulse Rifle Dexterity mod, Bond, Concussive Dampener, Enhanced Bomber, and Distribution mod. So with the build finding complete, I can finally break down why you should give this build a go, whether you are a new or old player, and a lot of it is down to improving your engagements against other players and coming out on top. The build focuses heavily on winning fights when you are critically wounded, as that's when the buff kicks in for you in general. What you have to realise is that the build works really well when you stick near players, as when you use your rift, you're not only providing health recovery back to them, but also provide a arc soul for them to carry around with them, and the rift will also last longer and charge faster when you're near allies. Now, this here is where my idea came into play. What if I use my subclass and exotic together to get my rift energy back up very quickly without needing to rely on getting a higher recovery stat, and to then pair it with a weapon that complements both these two items to make it near guaranteed to win most of my fights? The results from playing with the build has showed up very positive for me, and there's definitely a change of pace compared to what I would usually run with. As I'm an average player at best in PvP, 
this playstyle seems to work much more better for my playstyle as I can play cautious while still supporting my team by providing rifts whilst I'm alive or dead. And this is something I know will resonate with players alike with the sudden meta change in PvP and many players not being able to keep up with the change. The stack helm is a great all rounder exotic that gets sleeped on by many players as the exotic perk is heavily outplayed if you already have the stats needed to improve the area already. But when combined with the following subclass and using the Cold Eye Pulse with the Eye of the Storm and Pulse Mother perks, you get a build that really pushes the idea for you to challenge all types of players and not back away from them simply because you don't have a damage buff available or you're heavily outnumbered. Remember, you get Rift Energy upon reaching critical health, which means whether you survive it or not will allow you to pull out another Rift to heal yourself and engage with the next person after. All while, your stability gets increased and your weapon gets fully reloaded. Yes, in PvP, this can come in clutch for you. This will proc near all the time you fight, so you'll be able to make full use of the build in its glory and provide tons of rifts at your pleasure as well. Now don't get me wrong, you're not going to be going on streets with the build unless you know what you're doing and the downside to the build is that if everyone is clumped together then there's a high chance that a enemy team could use a grenade, grenade launcher or even a rocket launcher that could potentially wipe you all out in one go. But in the meantime with all these benefits going for you, this is definitely something worth experimenting with in PvP and seeing if this sticks. I see this build favours those who are still getting used to the game or want a build where they can support more as their gunplay isn't so great yet. Now if this sounds like you and you want to try out PvP but you don't know how to and you want to play it safe for the time being, then give this build here a go and see generally where it goes for you with it. But if not, then by all means improve on what I currently have here and see exactly what needs to be changed to your liking. Remember, every build I do is generally a blueprint for you to take, to then improve on, mold it into your liking, and then work from there. And I'll always be providing that for generally as long as Destiny keeps arriving with content. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for all stopping by, and I'll see you guys in the next one.